Let's get more on this now. Uh, Talk Sport Fight Night host Adam Carter, I'm delighted to say, is with us now. Adam, good morning. What do you make of that outburst from Tyson? He knows how to stir the pot, the big boy, doesn't he? Eh? <laughs> Not that's what, half. That's what we like to see. Is he overdoing it? Um, no, I don't think he's overdoing it. I think he's a little bit frustrated because he wants um, solidity. He wants to know what, who he's fighting and when he's fighting them. So I get his frustrations. But, boys, you've been here a million times before. Boxing's never straightforward. There's always politics. There's always backs and forth here, there and everywhere. And people uh, wanting their slice of the pie. I imagine that it will be um, concluded at some point this week. So hopefully Mr Fury will get his answer and we can all move forward. Yeah, I mean, Adam, I saw you uh, over the weekend and, and you were pushing this. You think it's in the best interest of everybody that this is indeed the scenario. AJ steps aside to allow Fury to have a go at you, say. Yeah, I think from, from a sporting point of view, um, every single fan here wants to see the Undisputed Championship of the World on the line. Uh, we haven't had a, a heavyweight Undisputed Champion since 1999. That was Lennox Lewis. Uh, we've got a great opportunity now. We've got Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. It is the final. We've seen a couple of semi-finals. We've enjoyed them, no doubt about that. Uh, but this is the final and we want to see that fight on. So if we can get that fight on... Um, then I think we should be pushing in order to do it. That's from a sporting point of view. From Anthony Joshua's point of view, um, he's, he's proactively said that he's, he's tweaking his training camp. Is that enough time for him to get ready for a second fight with Alexander Usyk straight away? I personally don't think it is. Listen, I might be wrong, but I personally don't think it is. So if someone's offering him the best part of 10, 15 million quid um, to delay his opportunity at becoming the undisputed champion, and that's what it is because he's the kingmaker here. He can turn around to people and say, listen, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll step aside, but I'm getting the first dibs. There's no rematch in the Fury Usyk fight, so I'm getting first dibs at whoever wins that, and I'm fighting for all the How, How's he the kingmaker? He's the only one without a belt. Because he's the biggest draw in the division still. Nobody's making as well, he much won't be if he steps aside because people will see him for what he is. Why will they? Because what he's doing is stepping away from going back and doing what he always says he does, which is get his titles back at the first available opportunity. He's doing what most great champions don't do, which is step away from a rematch. When, when, the, when, when Lewis loses to Rackman, the next fight he takes is Rackman. Yeah, but this is completely different, isn't it? Rackman is not Alexander Usyk. We've got a situation Because he gets where... beat by Usyk and everyone knows it. Well, okay, maybe so. But therefore, his, his rhetoric for the last God knows how long, Anthony Joshua, has been the road to undisputed. The best road for undisputed for him is to step aside, take the money that is on offer to him, get himself ready, maybe even take an interim fight and get himself ready with his brand spanking new training team to take on the winner of Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. There's more so, money so on the he loses, So fight. he loses his world title. Yep. Backs away from fighting the guy that he's beat, and he then gets an opportunity to fight for the undisputed. And you think that's right? I think that's right for boxing, yeah. Right now I do, yeah. And that's merit-based, is it? He loses to Usyk. No, He, he backs no, away no. from fighting Simon, Usyk, and then Simon. he gets an opportunity to be the undisputed. Simon, we've got a situation huh? that we've got to deal with this situation right now. Personally... I don't think there should have been a rematch clause in the Usyk AJ fight. It should have been a one hit quitter. At the end of the day, Usyk won that fight. We should now be in a process of talking about, purely talking about, Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury. That's so he has his cake and eats about. it, right? So he it's puts not a... his cake, though. Well, his ha team hang on. Put you the... just said he's, he's the kingmaker. He puts a rematch he clause in. He is the kingmaker. He puts the rematch clause in there to suit his ends. Then he opts out of the rematch he clause. He didn't do that. Well, yes, I understand that. But he's he put a rematch clause in there to protect himself. Now he backs away from the he's rematch clause because it doesn't suit him. And then you're saying he gets an opportunity to fight for the undisputed without the merit of having done that. Well, what I'm saying is, I personally believe that Anthony Joshua wants the Usyk fight. I don't think he wants to back away. This is why we're in this situation now and why it's taken so long. His team, who were there he doesn't, to advise him... He ignores him, his team. He, he goes into a fight with Rob McCracken giving him well, one well, set right of advice. Then. You're, you're, you're his him. manager. You're his manager. What would you advise him to do? I would do what the fighter wants to do within within within, within reason. He's at a no, stage. No, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You're his manager. Well, you what would you advise? Oh, what would on, you Adam. advise him to do? Hang, hang on, Adam. You can't ask me a question and answer it for me, can you? If you want me to answer the question, if I was his manager, I would ask the fighter what he really wanted to do, what he really wanted to do, because it's his career. Anthony Joshua will tell the world, as he has just done, that he's in control of his business. He's in control of what he wants. He knows his own mind. So I would hear it from him. I would give him my advice about what I thought from a commercial landscape. I would give him my advice about what I thought from a gladiatorial landscape. And I'd let the fighter, who extols to the world that he controls his business, mm -hmm. what he wants to do. Adam, what I can tell you is I've just had a message. I just took myself out of shot and had, had a listen. The talks are ongoing. We should know in the matter of a few hours. So it, it, it is indeed the crucial day today. We will know if Joshua is going to step aside, which allows uh, Fury to fight Usyk. What's your gut That's instinct? True, yeah. You yeah. know you know all the main protagonists in this, Adam. I know you do. What, what's your guess in it? 
Um, I know that, like I just said to Simon there, Anthony Joshua's team are adv- want him to take the option that I want him to take. He wants to fight. So it's going to be a case of whether they can convince him to obviously take the step aside money, um, maybe take an interim fight, and then become, uh, well, get himself an opportunity to fight for the Undisputed Championship of the World once Fury and Usyk is dealt with at yeah. some point this year. Do you think, Adam, on either one of those opportunities, let's say he doesn't step aside and he fights Usyk, or let's say he does step aside and he ends up fighting Fury, does he win either of those fights? If I'm honest, I don't think he does now. I'm in the same place. I would pay money to watch Catterall against Jordan. I'd be no, real excited no. for that. I must listen, say. Listen, he's as passionate as me about it. I would lose <laughs> in this all. instance. Not at all. Uh, Adam, what we also know is, and he, it was with great pleasure that we announced this on Talk Sport, uh, Amir Khan, Kel Brook, uh, long awaited grudge match. And of course, uh, Talk Sport will be all over it. You will be all over it, of course, with people like Gareth A. Davis, Spencer Oliver, and Andy Clark. It takes place February uh, the 19th. Exclusive cut radio coverage on. On talk sport from 7.30 I mean you've covered many a fight my friend I was in Dubai with you in December I watch how you operate you live for this sport um, you must be very very excited about what lies ahead with this one absolutely we've got two good ones um, a week on Saturday we're in Cardiff for uh for Eubank versus Williams. That'll be great in itself because obviously Liam Williams is a Welshman and therefore the crowd will be very pro him and Eubank's going into the lines then. It'll be a cracking atmosphere and I'm looking forward to uh, being there for that. But then two weeks later, we're in Manchester, as you say, uh, for Khan versus Brook. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and con anybody and say this is elite versus elite. This is the best of the best. It is past its sell-by date a touch, but what it is, is a very even contest. These two gentlemen are at a very similar stage of their careers with each other. Who wins that one? Per- oh, you put me on the spot now. I've got to interview both <laughs> of these guys. You can't sit on the fence here. I won't, <laughs> sit, I won't sit on the fence. What I will say is this. The first four rounds, that's how long Kel Brook's got to win the fight. He's right. got four rounds to win the fight. If he can't do it in that period of time, I think Amir Khan will stop him late. That's, that's so who I wins then? Fight. Who wins? I, I would edge towards... Amir Khan. Hey, oh, well done, there Adam, you go, Adam. Excellent stuff. It, 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 I don't know if you heard, but it, it, it freaked the nation out when Simon told Kel Brook that Khan would beat him. Kel wasn't too happy about that prediction. Adam Catterall, as always, you are the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, boys. Thank you very much. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.